I don't know about you, but I love type safety. I love TypeScript. I love knowing the types when I write my programs. This is especially important when I'm using JavaScript, so I use always use TypeScript. And I thought I would show you some examples of what I like to call end-to-end -end type safety. If you haven't heard that term before, I'm gonna define it. And so if you're coming from something like Nuxt or you've used TRPC, this will become familiar with you. And I wanna show you exactly how that works. To begin this, I wanna explain what type safety is and why you should use it. I love this definition. It's the ability of a programming language to prevent type errors during compilation. And if you've used languages like C Sharp and Java, which are strongly type languages, this is gonna be very familiar with you. And so it's the idea that when you declare variables, you have types on them. So instead of like things like JavaScript where you have const let and var, you actually have types like integers or strings or mat or certain types of more complex types where you have multiple pieces of information in them. Typically, JavaScript is a dynamically weak type language, while C Sharp and Java are strongly typed languages. But we can take something like JavaScript and make it strongly typed by adding in types. And that's where TypeScript comes in. So let me show you a, a very straightforward example of this. So let's say we have const a equals a string two. We have const b equals a number two, and we use a plus b. Now we know normally two plus two is four, but in this example, we're gonna get 22. And it doesn't really make sense. First, the number, the string 22 does not equal 22. And if you look at this, this doesn't make sense. And what's happening is there's a type of type coercion that happens that takes the string two and takes the number two and basically concatenates them together. So you get this string 22. And this is not what we would typically expect when we do something like this. We'd probably expect either to make it four or to give us an error. So this is typically what I look like when I have this problem. It, this doesn't make sense to me. And I wish my editor or my compiler would catch it beforehand. So how would this work if we were using types? So for example, in, ty in TypeScript, I can mark some as a type number and I could try this calculation again. And let's assume we're using something like Visual Studio Code or in any other type of IDE out there you'll get a message. As soon as you add in this colon number in here, you'll get something like this, type string is not assignable type number. And this would give us a tip off that we did something wrong. You can see how powerful that this is as you're writing more complicated apps. You have this kind of layer of debugging built into your editor, or you can even set it up that when you compile it back into JavaScript and we're, or transpile it back into JavaScript that it'll give you an error. And that's where TypeScript comes in, comes into play. So tra t you can take your application, and since TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, you can write your whole application in TypeScript, and then at some point you transpile it back down to JavaScript. So the quick definition is TypeScript is a free and open source high-level programming language developed by Microsoft that adds static typing with optional type annotations to JavaScript. And so this is a very powerful concept. Now. If you've used TypeScript, I think many people who are watching now have used it. This is pretty basic and you should probably understand this, but let's continue on and see what else, what else it does. And if you're brand new to TypeScript, that's okay too. This is an important concept. First, my name's Eric. I'm a developer advocate for AWS Amplify. I'm also a front end engineer. Technically, I'm still a front end engineer for AWS Amplify at the same time. I, I work, I have this YouTube channel and you can always tweet me at ericch. All right, so let me, let's talk about a little bit of the goals of this video today. We're gonna to talk about what is end-to-end -end type safety, what problems does it solve, and we're gonna show some examples using Amplify, TRPC, Nux, and others. So what is end-to-end -end type safety? I think we've gone over the basics of type safety, as you know it, especially using TypeScript and JavaScript and adding types. But what do I mean when I say end-to-end -end type safety? So I think a picture is worth a thousand words. So let's assume that we have a front end application and it's using TypeScript. 
And now we add in a back end system and it's also using TypeScript. This is, I think, a, a really powerful way to create your applications. I love Node, so I probably use Node with TypeScript. And then I could have types in the front end and back end. And we assume that we're gonna do some communications between the front end and back end and we wanna have types there. So let's assume the back end is talking to a database and it has a type customer in there and it has an ID, a full name, and an email. Fairly simple, straightforward schema for this back end database. And now we can see we can go ahead and in the front end we can create a interface or a type of type customer and we'll assume that anytime we receive data from the back end that this nice customer is going to go from the back end to the front end and we know the types. So we'll do a fetch as you see of some API and it'll be retrieved and we'll know exactly what it is. So you're probably thinking like, well, you're, you're talking about this end to end type safety. What does it really solve? So let's take a look. Okay. So let's look at that same example. Again, we're transferring, we're doing a fetch request from the front end and the back end is retrieving this typed customer back to it. But now something has changed. The back end has made a change that we have not anticipated. And this is pretty normal when you're working with a back end team and a front end team. A lot of times the back end changes a lot. The front end may not necessarily understand the changes happen, especially when you're in that long development period before you go into production, things change a lot. And so let's assume that the type for the customer has changed. Now we remove this full name and we need to actually have a first name, a last name and a middle name. So it's a little bit of different type. We've broken it out into multiple parts in the schema here. You can see here the full name is completely gone and we have these new types. So now the back end is going to send over to the front end this new type, but it's different in the front end because the front end does not realize this has changed. And so the front end here it retrieves this and it still expects a full name as a type that, that's coming back from it. And as soon as it tries to do a command on the full name, it's going to get an error because full name no longer exists. So now our back end and front end are out of sync. So what can you do? And I think I've done this in production and I've definitely seen their things in the back end of change. Usually what happens in a production environment is your back end team creates a contract, a back end contract, and they may use tools like Swagger or other ways to uh, publish it and to allow the front end to know. And then the front end will then consume it. If you're using something like GraphQL, you also have kind of a contract be the, between the front end and the back end. And you can only make certain requests from the front end to the back end using this language, but it's not as tightly knitted with TypeScript as I would like. But let's take a look at a few examples of what you can do to fix this. And here are a few libraries that I really enjoy and I really like. So we have first, we have a AWS Amplify. And so we have a brand new Gen 2 product that goes after this problem, which I'm gonna explain about. We also have TRPC, which is a really cool example of creating a TRPC server in the back end and then sharing types between the front end. We have something called Nest.js, which is an end, a back end framework that offers this kind of end to end type say functionality. If you're using Nuxt, if you probably noticed when you create an API route in Nuxt, the front end can automatically detect what the types are from the back end. There's something in the background called UnJS that they use to help do some of this type safety, but it's fairly it's fairly straightforward. In this talk, we're going to focus on AWS Amplify and TRPC, and we'll check those out. So first, let's start with AWS Amplify. So for those of you who don't know. Amplify is everything you need to build a full stack web and mobile app. So it, it's a, a set of tools to help you front end developers create full stack apps on AWS. I'm a little biased towards them because I work for AWS. And so we're going to start with this. It can also do uh, connect to data sources, do real time data deploys, things like that as well. All right. What I'm really excited about is we created recently in November of this year, AWS Amplify Gen 2 which has this type first developer experience that has this really cool way of doing dot notation between the back end and front end 
and connecting them together. It also has this infrastructure as code. So let's look a little bit more. So first we notice first it has this code first developer experience. So rather than using like a CLI tool or a kind of a drag and drop tool, now you have everything in code. So you can create your whole infrastructure as code, but you can also have this nice type safety in between. We also have full stack Git deployments, which are pretty powerful. We've noticed from talking to people that people just love, and I'm one of them, just love how Git, kind of the Git workflow of having different branches and those branches equal your development environment, your production, your QA environment. And so that's kind of built into this flow. And then we also notice that people want to test locally and test quickly. And so we have faster local development. Now we're going to get into TypeScript as well, but I just want to kind of give you a little bit of a definition of some of these features. So one thing with the code first development is you can write TypeScript across the front end and back end, get schema validation, dot completion, and then types. And especially with uh, schema validation, it's pretty, pretty nice. If you've seen before, I've done videos on Zod. So if you've seen Zod, this might look a little familiar to you. So let me give you an example of how this works. Let's assume that we're creating a brand new application and we're going to use AWS AppSync, which is our managed GraphQL service. And that's going to hold all our data in our database. That's going to be backed by DynamoDB. And then we're going to use an identity provider called Cognito to do our logins, authorization, auth end stuff. So with AppSync, we connect apps to data and events with secure serverless and performant GraphQL and PubSub APIs. That's basically what AppSync is. If you never used it, it's a really uh, straightforward way to save data in an AWS system. So here's an example of using Gen2. So I really want to focus in on this part. So with this, let's say here, five lines of code, you're able to create a full AppSync API which means that you're going to have this GraphQL based API with this customer model. It's going to have a full name and email in it. And it's also going to create something. If you're familiar with the GraphQL ecosystem, there's something called resolvers, which help tie like your data to your data sources. This is all going to be created for you. So you can do read, create reads, update and deletes, or essentially all your CRUD uh, uh, operations already just with these five lines of code. And then we're also adding some authorization to this. So you only certain people can edit it. People who create these records can edit and update and delete them. And public people can read it. So it has this kind of built-in authentication authorization system that you can override if you like, but it gives you some sane defaults to begin with. And one really important thing is that we have this type schema. So you can export type schema, and then you can infer this later on in your front end and have these types available. So when you make calls to the back end, you know the exact same types. And you create it in basically in the same repository. You create this, you could call this infrastructure as code, and then you have it available in the front end. If you've used something like Zod, you can see this type of inference as well. It looks probably looks a little bit in, uh, familiar. And just to give a quick shout out to Auth, because I think Auth is always a little scary for people who have never used it before. But you can do this with like 10 lines of code. This essentially creates the Cognito backend, which allows people to log in through email. Even this, in this case, it adds in this user attribute, which allows an additional profile, profile picture. And Cognito is one of those services too, as everything I'm showing you in this, uh, this video are on-demand services and you only get charged with things that you use. And I think Cognito has up to like 10,000 active monthly active users without any additional charges. And you can always get, there's a free plan that you can do with AWS. And then real quick, it has faster local development. And as you're creating your application, you have that type safety I'm talking about, but you have this full way of creating apps locally for each user. So you can spin up environments for Nikhil, Renee, Joseph, they have their own front end. You can use Vue, Next, react, whatever you want, and then you can do testing against it. So let's imagine we've talked a little bit about the back end. Let's imagine the scenario we're going to use Next.js in our front end. I'm a huge Next.js fan. I'm a huge Next.js fan too. You can do very similar things in both. Let's assume we use Next. And then we want to, and this is inside the Next app, we want to 
contact that model that we created, that schema, that backend database using AppSync. And you can see here, we can do it in a couple ways. First, we're using that schema that we exported out from that infrastructure's code part. And now we have this new client and we can set our use state. So that way we have the right types for our customer. And then we can do all sorts of things. This case, we do a client.models.customer.list. Of all the different, normally if you're doing schemas and if you're using GraphQL, you have this kind of language that you have to parse together to put exactly what you want from the front end to the back end. In this case, it's already built in because it's all built on TypeScript. So we can just do a dot list and we can grab all the data. We can do create reads and updates and deletes, and it's all typed for us. In this case, we're just grabbing all the customers. Uh, a common problem that happens in GraphQL is that you have to be careful when you're doing your queries from your front end to the back end because you might have this problem where you fetch too much. And GraphQL actually creates, actually fixes that problem. So you can ask exactly what you want. And if you look at this example, you're probably thinking like, oh, if you do a list, you're grabbing every single field and maybe that's too much information. But there is a way to fix this in our Gen 2. So we have a whole API where we can do selection sets. So you can specify exactly what you need from your front end or from your back end database. So you're not over fetching too much data. In this case, we can just grab the full name. Now, let me quickly kind of talk about TRPC. I could probably do a whole video on TRPC. There's so much uh, great things about it, but I think it's worth talking about here. So TRPC allows you to easily build and consume fully type safe APIs without schemas or code generation. So this is compared to Amplify, which actually has an infrastructure as code and it has this kind of type safety using our AppSync service. TRPC you can use with any service and it doesn't do any infrastructure as code. So it's just kind of fully specific, specific on this one use case. So let's, there's three different parts we can, we have to do with TRPC to get it up and running. So first we define our procedures. So you can see right here, we first, we create a router. In this case, we're telling it, this would be created in the back end somewhere that we create a greeting. It requires input in Z dot object. This is a Zod. This is type of validation and it only takes type string or object with has a type name, which is type string, and then it has a query and the query returns this input. So it returns hello with the input name as a const. You create your HTTP server next. In this case, you can do this create HTTP server. Now, if you're using something like next or, or nuxt, then this would be a little, look a little different, but let's assume this is like a standalone backend. And then you connect your client and start querying. So in your client side, you might see this app router. This kind of probably looks familiar if you just saw my previous example and I was using Amplify and we had that schema. Now we have this app router. So the front end can, can consume the types and in this case, the router. And it can now, it has this type safety. So you can be trpc.greeting. It knows the types because it's, it's basically assuming it's grabbing it from the create trpc client. And you can do similar things. And this has a little bit more flexibility because you can create basically any API that you want and you know you have that type safety between the back end and front end. You can see here right at the end, we're doing the greeting.query. We know that we have to send a name in. It actually type give you a TypeScript error if you don't send in the correct format back over. And it will return this response that we expect. So I hope you guys learned a little bit about type safety today. Uh, I really think this is the future. I think all apps should have something like this built in. Let me know if you have any questions below and I have a quick update to my channel. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I always have, if you guys need more help on this, I have mentoring. I've always put a link in every one of my descriptions. You can sign up for my mentoring service. You can get some more help. Uh, I also at any time too, you can leave a comment below. And I am working on a video on VTest. If you guys are interested in that, I will have that out hopefully either later this week or next week. But I've, everybody's been asking for that. So I'm looking to do a fun video on that. Thanks.